This is MSJ Chem, and in this video we're going to be looking at calculating enthalpy changes. Enthalpy changes can be measured using a calorimeter. On the left we have a simple calorimeter, made from a polystyrene coffee cup with a lid and a thermometer. The heat absorbed or released raises or lowers the temperature of a known mass of water or solution. For example, the enthalpy of neutralization can be measured by mixing a strong acid and a strong base in the cup and measuring the change in temperature. Once we've measured the change in temperature, we can use the equation Q equals mc delta t to calculate the enthalpy change. Next we'll have a look at this equation Q equals mc delta t. The Q stands for heat, which is measured in joules, m stands for the mass of the solution or the water, and that's measured in grams, c is the specific heat capacity, and delta t is the change in temperature measured in degrees centigrade or Kelvin. So next we'll have a look at an example of calculating the enthalpy change for a reaction. So in this example we have 50 centimeters cubed of 1 mole per decimeter sodium hydroxide and it's added to 50 centimeters cubed of 1 mole per decimeter hydrochloric acid in a polystyrene cup. The temperature of the solution increases from 19.5 degrees C to 24.3 degrees C. So next we're going to calculate the enthalpy change of neutralization. So we'll start off with the balanced equation. Hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride and water. Next we'll calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid and the number of moles of sodium hydroxide using the equation N equals CV, that's number of moles equals concentration times volume in decimeters. So when we do this calculation here, we end up with 0.0500 moles of hydrochloric acid and the same number of moles, that's 0.0500 moles of sodium hydroxide. In this reaction, we have equal amounts in moles of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, so we don't have to worry about the limiting reactant. And if we look at the ratio of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide to water, it's a one to one ratio. So next we'll use the equation Q equals mc delta T to calculate the enthalpy change. So for the mass, we're making the assumption that one centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide and one centimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid equals one gram. So if we add 50 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid and 50 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide, that equals 100 centimeters cubed. So we're saying that 100 centimeters cubed of the solution is equal to 100 grams. Then we multiply by the specific heat capacity of water and then we multiply by the change in temperature, which is 24.3 minus 19.5. So when we do the calculation, we get Q equals 2006.4 joules, and that's for 0 0.0500 moles of water produced. The enthalpy of neutralization is the enthalpy change when one mole of water is formed. So we have to calculate the enthalpy change for one mole of water. So next, we divide our answer by the number of moles of water produced to give us an enthalpy change of 40,000 128 joules per mole. And finally, we're going to divide by a thousand to get our answer in kilojoules. We're going to put a negative sign in front because the reaction is exothermic. And we're going to give our answer to three significant figures. So the final answer is negative 40.1 kilojoules per mole. If you look up a literature value for the enthalpy change of neutralization, you'll find it's around negative 57.0 kilojoules per mole. So next we'll calculate the percentage error. So we take the experimental value minus the literature or theoretical value and we divide that by the theoretical value and we multiply by 100. That gives a percentage error of negative 30%. The negative sign tells us that my experimental value is less than the theoretical value. So what are some possible reasons for this percentage error? Well, one of them is a systematic error and that's heat loss to the surroundings. The polystyrene cup is not a perfect insulator, so some heat will be lost to the surroundings. When doing the calculations, we made some assumptions and that's that the solution has the same density and specific heat capacity as water.
In our next example, we're going to calculate the enthalpy change of combustion for methanol. That's the enthalpy change when one mole of methanol is burned in excess oxygen. In our results table, we have the initial mass of the burner and the methanol, which is this spirit burner here. We have the final mass of the burner and the methanol. We have the mass of the water in the test tube here. We have the initial temperature of the water and the final temperature of the water. So we're going to calculate the standard enthalpy change of combustion of methanol from the above data. So let's start by calculating the change in mass of the methanol. So it's the initial mass minus the final mass, which gives us a change of 0.52 grams. Next, we'll calculate the number of moles of methanol. So we use the equation number of moles equals mass divided by molar mass. The mass is 0.52. The molar mass of methanol is 32.05. That gives us 0.016 moles of methanol. Next, we'll use the equation Q equals mc delta T. So the m is the mass of the water, which is 20.00 grams. We have the specific heat capacity of water, and that's multiplied by the change in temperature, which is 56.3 minus 19.5. When we do the calculation, Q equals 3,076.48 joules, and that's for 0.016 moles of methanol. As I mentioned earlier, the enthalpy change of combustion is when one mole of methanol is burnt in excess oxygen. So we have to divide our value here by the number of moles of methanol here to give us 192,280 joules per mole. We're going to give our answer in kilojoules per mole, so we'll divide this value by a thousand, and we'll put a negative sign in front because the reaction is exothermic. So our final answer to two significant figures is negative 190 kilojoules per mole. The literature value for the enthalpy change of combustion of methanol is negative 726 kilojoules per mole. If we calculate the percentage error, we get negative 74%. The negative percentage error tells us that our experimental value was lower than the theoretical value. With such high percentage error, we must have systematic errors in our experiment. So the possible systematic errors are heat loss to the surroundings, not all the heat was transferred to the water, and incomplete combustion of the methanol. So that's all from this video. If you check the video description, you'll find a link to a practice worksheet that has many more examples of the calculations featured in this video.